The Hugo Steins playbook is going to be an excellent one for you to make sure that you are putting your money and allocating things in, in the best way for if there's a shift in the, the dollar, if there's a shift in the world order, everything that we've been talking about, it's an excellent way to protect your investments. And, and so in order to understand this, let's understand first who Hugo Steins was, what he did and why it mattered and how you can do it too. Okay, so Hugo Steins, uh, he, he lived, or he was the richest man in Germany in the 1920s. And why that matters is because in between World War I and World War II, smack dab in the middle of that was a, a huge economic crisis, not just in, in Germany, but worldwide, right? That's the, 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 well, the roaring 20s, right? And then it sets the stage for the Great Depression. But in Germany, they went through a period of hyperinflation during the Weimar Republic. And I did a video about this already, so you can go check it out. The Weimar Republic and, and the important dates and, and all the factors that made hyperinflation happen. But what, what's important to note is that um, Hugo Steins, he, um, like he lived during that time and he became the, the richest man in Germany. So remember, hyperinflation, it wiped out so much wealth. So many people uh, had their savings, had their investments just pff, decimated. And the working class, you know, like it, it made jobs hard to keep, hard to find. It just, it tons of volatility and instability in that economy. Now, so many people lost during that time. Lots of hunger, starvation, unemployment. But it's important to note that there was a smaller group of people that won, right? They were the the titans that rose to power during that same time period. Now why? What separated the small group of masters versus the masses who lost? Well, let's take a look. So the best of the best was Hugo Steins. And what happened was, um, you know, prior to hyperinflation, he inherited some coal mines from his grandpa and his dad. And he learned how to run those. And, uh, and so he's, he just you know, back in those times, they didn't have like all these specialty schools with mines. And so like he, he a lot of it was on the job training. You know, he learned how to run it. Uh, and then he, he realized that he needed to get his coal to the market. And so shipping things different places was extremely important. And so he saw the writing on the wall uh, before hyperinflation really kicked off. And so he borrowed money in the, you know, the local currency and he used that those loans to buy up more mines and he also used it to buy up boats and ships and logistics and ways to move his coal around and and so what happened was when hyperinflation took off those loans rapidly diminished in in value right and so he was able to buy producing assets and then trade overseas and trade in other economies right for more stable currency and then pay back the loan in a more stable currency, which means he played both sides of the game, right? So his loan, he, he took the loan out and it was like this much. And then just because of hyperinflation, just the, the actual, you know, value that he had to pay back was way lower. And then he, he used really strong currency to pay that loan back. And so it really just boosted his wealth and skyrocketed his empire. But what, what's important to note, what he did and what really transfers to you is that he he took out you know he used those uh, weakening currencies to buy up actual production things that matter so in any in any changing world order in any economic recession or, or depression or global conflict civil war or whatever it is there's these core things that will always retain their value that will always be needed and those things often include things like fuel Right, because we need to burn fuel. Even if you're poor, even if you don't have anything, like, uh, like even if you don't have a roof over your head, we consume energy. Right, we need to make a campfire, and so you got to have wood to make the fire. Right, if you have a house, you need, you know, coal or you need natural gas or whatever it is. Right, it's like every human being needs fuel, and so in organized societies, you know, the logistics around how do you get fuel to all these masses is a problem that. Um, you know, is has been solved before, but it continues to be dynamic as communities, you know, new towns are built and cities are expanded and all that kind of stuff. And so fuel or energy is always one of these sectors of investment that can be tied to real production and holds its value throughout changing economies. 
right? So Hugo Steins did that. And during his time, coal was like the main fuel source, right? Not so much today, coal. So I'm not saying to go buy coal. <laughs> I'm saying that look at the template and read between the lines. And then today, you know, oil remains big, natural gas remains big, natural gas will continue to grow in how important it is in the global economy. I'm not arguing the morality of one fuel source versus another. Okay, that's not what this video is about. Right? I, I, I get it that people, you know, beat their chest and bang pots and pans when we talk about oil and hydrocarbons and green energy and renewables and, you know, take care of the planet. And, and I get all of that. This video is not about morality. It's just reality about like what today's infrastructure looks like and in the near future what it's going to look like and then being able to uh, position your investments to be involved in a meaningful way um, so to, to protect your portfolio right to protect your assets so that being said take a page out of his book and uh, watch for more videos because we're going to dive deeper um, because uh, there's a lot to be said about the different forms of energy the movements around the globe, where energy is going, where it's coming from, and uh, and what you can do to participate in those movements. All right, so watch for the videos that are going to drop. Set the alarm bell to make sure that you're aware of new uh, alerts and videos that are coming. And I'm super stoked. Thanks for tuning in.